In January 2010 in Singtium Junction, Oregon, a daughter who asked not to be named was cleaning out her father's bedroom as he had just passed away the previous week. She stumbled upon something that not only baffled her but scared her to death. She found her father's journal and was surprised as she'd never seen him write in a journal and had no idea he'd been keeping one. One journal entry from June 1st, 1960 scared the hell out of her. June 1st, 1960. My two best friends must have laid there frozen in utter horror, unable to move as she ripped and ate the flesh from their legs. In that moment, they must have realized this was the end. As I laid there paralyzed, my own thoughts of how it all started came flooding back into my mind. We'd all heard the rumors growing up about a witch that lived deep in the forest of Saintium, but none of us believed the old stories to be true. Stories of kids wandering too far into the forest, never to be found or heard from again. Nothing more than old stories meant to frighten us kids so we wouldn't venture too far into the forest. Or so we thought. The start of summer vacation is always the best. No school for three months. That first week of summer vacation started out like so many before. Me waking up, grabbing a quick breakfast, and meeting my friends out by the edge of the forest so we could explore and plink our BB guns at anything that moved. I've had the same two best friends ever since I was four years old, Jim and James. We did everything together and were inseparable. Since I was an only child, you could say they were more like my brothers than just friends. We never argued or fought about anything. We always agreed about what to do and where to go when we'd hang out. It was as if we could read each other's thoughts. There was a fairly big river that flowed out of the forest and through the middle of town that we'd hang out a lot during the summer months. It was always fun to cool off on a hot day, and a bonus was there were a lot of fish in the river. We loved catching the brook trout that lived in the river with our bare hands. We'd start a fire, cook and eat them right there on the river. Sometimes, though, we'd follow the river up through the forest until we came to a waterfall that flowed off of some very high cliffs. We'd never ventured past the cliffs in all the years we'd been exploring up there. It's hard to say why we never did before that day. It was either because of the creepy stories we always heard of a witch that lived deep in the forest, or as we like to tell ourselves, it was too dangerous to climb up the cliffs. On this day though, we must have been feeling braver than usual, because James mentioned climbing up the cliffs to see what was on the other side, and neither Jim nor myself objected to the idea. In fact, we wholeheartedly agreed so we set off climbing up the cliffs with the gusto any 12-year-old boy has. When we reached the top of the cliffs, which was much easier than we expected, we could see that there was a huge valley that was blanketed with pine trees as far as the eyes could see. The valley was so thick with pine trees, it was as if someone had laid out green carpet. Never did it enter our minds this valley might be the very place everyone warned us not to venture into. To us, it looked cool and inviting. So off we went following the river. Exploring new country was exciting and we liked to imagine we were the first people to ever set foot in this area. We followed the river quite a ways, throwing rocks and sticks into it as we walked and talked before it dawned on us that it was almost dusk and would be getting dark soon. Right then, overwhelming fear hit us. We stood there looking at each other in fear. And right before we could say anything, we heard someone or something cackle from inside the darkness of the forest. It was the most hideous cackle any one of us had ever heard in our 12 years of existence. It wasn't the funny kind of cackle. This was something far more sinister and evil. We immediately turned around to get the hell out of there when we saw something to our left coming straight at us through the thick pine trees, and it was coming fast. Because it was getting dark and the forest was so thick, 
We couldn't make out exactly what it was that was moving so swiftly towards us through the trees. We'd get quick glimpses of it as it darted quickly through the trees as it closed in on us. The last thing I remember before blacking out was James yelling, run, run, run. I'm not sure exactly how long I was out, but I woke up in a deep state of panic and it was pitch black. I whispered out to my friends in the darkness, but there was no response. I sat there for a while, not moving a muscle. I was trying to gather my thoughts and think about what I should do next when I noticed through a small opening of pine trees what appeared to be a light, a fire to be exact. At first I was relieved, thinking it might be my friends, but then it hit me. My friends would never leave me alone in the dark so far away from them. They would build a fire right here where I blacked out. I then remembered the cackle and the thing that was moving swiftly through the trees, and terror shot through my body like a million needles all jabbing me at once. It took me a few minutes to muster up enough courage, but I stood up and gathered myself. By now my eyes were adjusting to the darkness somewhat. I slowly and methodically crept towards the fire, but made sure I kept my distance. Once I thought I was close enough to get a good look, I hunkered down behind a big tree. I thought it best if I could see who made the fire first before I strolled on in over there. As I sat hunkered down by the pine tree, I could hear the faint sound of whimpering and crying. I put my hand up to my ear so I could hear better. It was then I could hear the pleas of someone saying, please, please stop, please stop eating me. I immediately froze in place and my heart must have stopped and I couldn't breathe. I thought I was going to die. I gasped for air as I told myself to stand up and run, to get as far away from the fire as I could. But no matter what I did, I couldn't stand up or move. Air finally entered my lungs after what seemed like an eternity. My head was spinning and I was very dizzy. After a few minutes, I was able to calm myself down enough to start thinking about what I should do next. I knew I had to get as far away as possible, but I also wanted to find my friends and it was pitch black. If I could just find the river, I could at least follow it to the cliffs and wait until morning before I worked my way down. I put my hand on the closest pine tree to steady myself as I tried to stand up as quietly as I could. I'd been sitting for quite some time, so my legs were numb from lack of blood flow. I thought it was best if I waited for a few minutes for the blood to return to my legs before I tried walking. I knew I needed to be as quiet as possible, and I didn't want to be stumbling around making noise. After a few minutes, I turned around to head back the way I came, hoping that was the direction of the river. Right as I was about to take my first step, I heard that hideous cackle again, only this time it was right behind me. I immediately froze in place, not able to move. I knew whatever it was, was mere inches away from me, because I could hear its hideous, raspy breathing, the smack of its lips, and I could smell it. It was the most horrific stench. It smelled worse than any of the dead animals we would occasionally come across as we explored the mountains. In my mind, I was screaming to myself, run, 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 damn you. My legs wouldn't obey me though. They just stood there frozen in place, like they were encased in concrete. I was about to turn my head around to see what was behind me when all of a sudden I felt a hand grab my shoulder. In that split second, I took off running as fast as my legs would go. Adrenaline surged through my body as I stumbled through the forest. I had no idea which direction I was going, but I didn't care. 
I just wanted to get as far away as possible. After running for who knows how long, I had to stop because I started throwing up from the adrenaline and because I'd run faster than I'd ever had in my life. After I finished throwing up, I reminded myself why I was running and I needed to continue running until I found the river. Right as I gained my composure and I stood up, I heard the cackle again, this time right in front of me. Then I heard a loud thwack. I hit the ground in a heap, wriggling in pain. I could feel the warmth of my blood as it gushed out from my head. Whatever cackled and hit me then grabbed my leg and started dragging me through the forest at an alarming pace. Whatever it was that had a hold of me was very strong. I knew there was no chance I could break free from its grasp. That in my head was spinning and I was going in and out of consciousness. When I awoke, I was laying next to the fire. I assumed it was a fire I had been watching earlier. I tried moving my arms and legs to get up, but to no avail. I was paralyzed. I couldn't move any part of my body. All I could do was think about my friends and where they were. As I turned my gaze as much as I could to look around, I saw the bloody and dismembered bodies of my two friends. I tried to scream, but nothing came out. It was as if my vocal cords had been ripped out of my throat. I tried telling myself to get up and run, but no matter what I did, my body would not obey my commands. Tears streamed down my face as I laid next to the fire that was too hot. I could feel it burning my skin because I was so close and it hurt like hell. I wasn't sure what was worse, my throbbing head or the fire that was blistering the skin on my arm. I must have passed out again because I remember waking up to the most god-awful face I'd ever seen in my life, just inches away from mine. From what I could tell, it was a female. At least I thought it was, but I couldn't even tell if it was a human or not. Its skin was moist, pale, and extremely dirty. Her hair was jet black, greasy, and messy. It looked like it had been soaked in motor oil. As she was on top of me staring down, she smiled, showing me her black, crooked, nasty, sharp teeth. As drool leaked from her mouth onto my face, getting into my eyes and into my mouth. I started to dry heave as I tasted the most disgusting taste I'd ever tasted in all my 12 years. As I was dry heaving, she let out another hideous cackle that rang out through the dead still of the night. It was dark and quiet as we laid next to that fire. In my mind, I knew I was going to die and meet the same fate as my two best friends. It was then I decided to accept my fate and I closed my eyes. Right as I closed my eyes, I heard the sounds of heavy footsteps getting closer and closer. I then heard a deep, boisterous voice the voice of a man that spoke in another language I didn't recognize. I remember looking up and seeing a big burly man with a large beard that looked like a lumberjack. He quickly swung a large old looking ax at the thing that was on top of me, sending it flying several feet across the fire and landing on top of my friend's dismembered bodies. He then stepped in front of me, keeping himself between me and the thing. In his deep foreign voice, he spoke again and motioned it to come at him. It didn't waste any time leaping at him from across the fire, aiming for his neck. He was too quick for it and looked as if he was expecting it. He stuck the top of the axe under its chin and swung it around, hitting a large pine tree that was next to me. He held it pinned up against the pine tree as it tried clawing at him before dropping it to the ground. Then in one fluid motion with no hesitation, he cut off its head. Blood squirted from its headless body getting all over my face. 
The bearded burly man stood there for a bit looking at the now headless witch before looking down at me and speaking to me in his foreign language. I tried speaking, but again nothing came out. Whatever the witch had given me, not only did it paralyze my body, but my speech as well, which I was hoping I'd get back. He then looked up and away from me like he was deep in thought. After a minute had gone by, he looked back at me and spoke in broken English. Witch dead. She won't eat you. You speak later. He reached down and picked me up, moving me away from the fire, far enough it couldn't burn my skin anymore. I was exhausted physically and emotionally, and no sooner had he set me down, I fell into a deep slumber. I had the most god-awful dreams that night, and the witch was in every one of them, trying to eat me. I was awoken to the sound of birds chirping, and I immediately sat upright, and for a split second I thought everything had been a dream. I looked over and saw the bearded man who looked like a lumberjack. He was sitting on a log not too far away from the fire, with his old wooden axe between his legs. His face had no expression and he looked like he could use a bath. We sat there looking at each other for a while before he spoke again in broken English. Your friends, sorry I no get here fast. Tears started streaming down my face as I looked around and noticed their bodies were gone. I knew he must have buried them, and I was thankful as I didn't want to see that horrific sight again. He could see I was looking around for them, and he said, I put friends underground. Smell of blood, more witches come. More witches, there's more, I thought to myself. Who are you? I asked him as I surprised myself I could talk again. My name, Edvard. My family come America many, many years ago to kill witches, he responded. There are more witches, I asked. Yes, many. My family kill them for a long time. Stop from eating everyone, he replied. You live here in the forest, I asked. Yes, never leave forest. Leave forest and witches leave forest, he responded. Where is your family from, I asked him. Come from Scandinavia, he replied. I sat there trying to process everything he had just told me. I wouldn't have believed any of it if it didn't actually happen to me. Witches eat people since beginning. Witches come first, then man, he said. They were here before man was, I asked. Yes, witches make man for food. No witches, no man, you understand, he asked. I think so. They created us for their food, I responded. Yes, make man for food, man fight back, almost kill all witches, some witches still alive, must always look and kill witches, he said. Are you by yourself, Edvard? I asked. No, have small village deep in forest, he responded. I thought to myself, holy shit. He's probably never left the forest and has no idea what's on the outside. It's like they're living the way we used to 100 years ago. Time just passed them by, but for good reason. You go now. More witches come, said Edvard. I shook my head in acknowledgement, and I wasn't about to argue with him. He came over and helped me stand up. My legs hurt like hell and were very stiff. I slowly started walking as Edvard held my arm so I wouldn't fall. It wasn't long before the blood started flowing through my legs again, and I could almost walk normally. We walked for several miles before finally coming to the edge of the cliffs my friends and I had climbed up the day before. You get down? asked Edvard. I think so, I replied as I nodded my head. You know come back here. Tell people stay away, 
said Edvard. Yes, of course, I replied. But yes to not coming back here again, but not yes to telling people to stay away. No one would believe me if I told them why they needed to stay away. And if I did tell them, they would scour the mountains for Edvard and his village, and I knew they must never be found. I looked down the cliffs, thinking it wasn't going to be easy to scale them. I then turned around to thank Edvard for saving my life, and all I could see was the back of him with his axe slung over his shoulder as he walked into the trees following the river. I stood there for a while, gathering my thoughts and thinking what in the hell just happened and how I was going to explain the loss and disappearance of my two best friends. I knew no matter what, I could not lead anyone to this area. This secret had to go with me to the grave. I fought back the tears as I made my way down the steep cliffs. <laughs>